الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته uh, We welcome uh, everyone to uh, our uh, Hamziya lessons and today inshallah is the second lesson we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make these lessons beneficial uh, and make it a means for increasing our love for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam amen so uh, in the last lesson we did a little bit of an introduction to the topic of madih uh, which is uh, poetry in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the origins of this poetry and the tradition of this uh, in Islam. And I mentioned how uh, this tradition comes from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself uh, when his companions uh, would write poems about him uh, and, and praise him and, and recite these poems to him and present them to him. And on many occasions, he uh, not only approved of these poems by words, uh, often he even uh, rewarded uh, the poet physically with a gift. So uh, therefore, uh, to, uh, to recite and learn and and, and study such because the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is three types. It is uh, a sunnah al-fi'liya and a sunnah al-qawliya and a sunnah al a sunnah al taqririya That it's a sunnah, uh, one is his action, sunnah, a sunnah al-fi'liya. It's uh, something the, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. Buliya, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to do. So that's uh, a sunnah, hawliya. Uh, not his action, but his words. And often the two are the same as well, right? They overlap. Uh, because when he would tell us to do something, he would do it himself as well. Uh, and the third type of sunnah is a sunnah taqririya. Uh, Sallam did or said, but it is something the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam approved of. So it is something uh, that was uh, uh, done in his presence and he approved of it. He did. he didn't stop it. So include that. So even if he was done in front of him, and uh, he he uh, and he did not stop it. Then that becomes a sunnah uh, as well, uh, because remember, a, a messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, or any prophet for that matter, uh, is required by Allah to forbid evil, to forbid what is wrong, or, or to tell people at least alert people, inform people of what's wrong. So you cannot do something wrong in front of a prophet. And you're one of his followers, by the way. And he doesn't correct you. He just lets you do it. So the fact that somebody did something in front of the prophet, وسلم, and he didn't stop them, then that uh, means he approves of it. Uh, and that's if he said nothing about it. It was just done in front of him, and he said nothing about it. Uh, of course, if he praises that action, and he commends that action, and he openly approves of it, in, in an oral way, uh, verbally, then of course uh, that's definitely uh, making it a, a a sunnah without a doubt, because he sallallahu alaihi is praising that action. So in that sense, uh, the, the, the to study uh, to recite the poetry of Madih, uh, the praises of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Madaih al Nabawiya, it is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because the Sahaba. He used to do it in front of him and recite to him, and he would approve of that. <clears throat> and never once did he stop them. Uh, in fact, uh, some of our shuyukh like to say that to recite 
the poetry in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam is a sunnah of the Sahaba to sing and recite the poems in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi is a sunnah of the Sahaba and to listen to those poems is a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he would listen to it. They, they, they recite and he listens to it. So listening to Madih, therefore, is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we have our shuyukh and, and we see our, our great scholars uh, 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 listening to poems like the Burda and, and the Hamziya and the uh, Muhammadiya and, and so many of the Diwans and the poems of Madih, then they are following the Sunnah of the Prophet <clears throat> So of course, uh, uh, after the Sahaba, every uh, subsequent generation of Muslims uh, wrote uh, 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 poems for the Prophet Sallallahu and expressed uh, their love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through uh, poetry and through prose and in, in, in every way possible. But we're focusing here on, on poetry. Uh, and today, of course, uh, after 1400 years, we have uh, 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 an ocean of of poetry in praise of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam there's countless poems you can you can count them uh, uh, thousands and thousands of poems that were written in praise of the prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam throughout the 1400 years islam and uh, these poems are single poets yeah, it's also all of them put together. Uh, so many great uh, imams in the history of Islam have written uh, uh, poetry describing the Prophet ﷺ and praising him and uh, highlighting his qualities and recounting his miracles. And there's countless poems. And uh, nobody has really collected all of them in one place. That's, I would say that's impossible. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, a great collection is Al Majmu'a Al Nabhaniya, Al Majmu'a Al Nabhaniya fil Madayh Al Nabawiya by the renowned <coughs> scholar of the 20th century, the renowned Palestinian scholar, uh, Al Imam Yusuf bin Ismail Al Nabhani. And that's a name every one of us should know. Those who love Rasulullah Sallam and care about this uh, uh, aspect of Islam should know this name, Imam al-Nabhani. Uh, Imam al-Nabhani was from Palestine, uh, Palestine, uh, from a place called Idzim. It's a village called Idzim. And uh, he became a great scholar of Islam and, and one of the greatest scholars of the 20th century uh, and a renowned for his love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He wrote numerous books in praise and defense of the Prophet Sallallahu and the awliya and the salihin. Hadith and Sunnah. Uh, he himself was a poet and he wrote many poems in praise of the Prophet, including a poem which in which he tried to imitate the Hamziya of Imam al Busayri. So he also wrote a Hamziya uh, where he tried to imitate the Hamziya of Imam al Busayri while acknowledging that in no way can he match uh, Imam al Busayri's uh, uh, level and acknowledging that I'm but a student of Busayri. So uh, his Hamziya is called Taybat al Gharab. So this Imam al-Busayri, uh, al-Nabhani, he uh, tried to also compile uh, as he stated, poems in praise of the Prophet for 1400 years, uh, the, the best ones and the most famous ones, and uh, he compiled a large number of them in his uh, called um, uh, uh, four big volumes of poems that are compiled by uh, ulama and awliya and this is you know by Imam Nabhani he passed away in the 19 uh, around the 1920s and 30s around and since his in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sheikh Ibrahim Niyas, the ones that hundreds of poems, these are after Imam al-Nabhani's time. 
So uh, this is an, uh, 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 you know, a, uh, uh, this is something that will never stop because as long as there are Muslims uh, who love the Prophet وسلم, and who know the Arabic language, they will continue to write these poems. Uh, and not only the Arabic language, because this type of poetry is found in every language of Islam that is spoken by Muslims. So, uh, You look at uh, RSC, there are hundreds of full poems, you know, by the likes of Jami and, and uh, Rumi and Saadi and uh, Sinai and, and Shirazi and all of these people uh, in the Urdu language. Also, there are thousands of such poems written, countless, in fact, uh, amongst them, the, the poems of Ala Hazrat, uh, Maulana Ahmad Rida Khan, Barelavi, and, and so on, and so many other poets. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and in the Urdu and Farsi uh, uh, literature, these poems are called Naat Sharif. Naat Sharif. Honorable disc And so on. In, in, in so many ways, I noticed that in the language, uh, there is now the trend of writing these poems in praise of the Prophet Sallallahu It's a very welcome trend and I support it. I fully encourage it. And if you want to see more of these come out, I've seen the English come out from someone in the UK. Uh, uh, other songs and poems in English uh, uh, that you can sing in the tune of the Buddha. Uh, and this is beautiful because uh, while it's nice to recite the Arabic, it's good to also sing something that you understand. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, the Burda of uh, uh, the Hamzi of Imam al busayri remains one of the greatest poems ever written in praise of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi It's second, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's rivaled. Uh, and it's second only to the Burda of Imam al Busayri as well. So it's the same, uh, uh, you know, poet. He gets the first prize and he gets the second prize. He gets the first prize for the Burda and he gets uh, the second prize, the silver medal for the Hamziya. Uh, uh, of course, the Hamziya is much longer than the Burda, five times longer than the Burda and much more elaborate than the Burda. And uh, the reason. He, uh, Imam al Busayri, radiallahu an, authored this uh, uh, Hamziya. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we're not 100% sure about that. Uh, narratives that mention that when Imam al Busayri uh, wrote the Burda, uh, it was loved by everyone. And, uh, you know, even the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, appeared in his dream and approved of this poem, the Burda. However, it is narrated that his mother, uh, when she heard the Burda, uh, she, she liked the poem, but she wasn't impressed about one thing. And that is that she said to him that uh, <laughs> You pray uh, with a poem that's, uh, you know, uh, that is Mansub. That uh, with uh, who's right. So what I mean by that is that the Buddha, every line in it ends with a meme, and that's why it's called the Mimiya as well. Uh, but the meme is pronounced as descending me it's going down so it starts with uh, uh, you know amin tazakkuri jiran in bizi salam me madach tadam an jara min muqlati bida me am habbat al rih min tilqa'i kazimatin wa awmad al barq fi al zalma'i min idami Mawlana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala alihi mi. 
right? Muhammad al Sayyid al Kawnaini wa Safalaini wa Farikaini min Urbin wa min Ajami. So the me uh, with the Kasra you know, uh, below the mean, uh, it's descending. The Kasra indicates going down. <laughs> To, uh, uh, while the custom going down, the bamma, the bamma, which is the u, which means ascending. Language for any word that ends with a bamma. Uh, is which is oo the oo sound. Uh, the term used in the Arabic grammar is marfur, and marfur ascending, going up. While sound is uh, you know that it is uh, which is majrur, which is it is going down. It is descending. So Sal uh, Al Busairi's mother. When she heard the Burda, it is narrated uh, that she said to him, you've praised the Prophet Sallallahu but how can you praise him with something that is going down, which is descending? If you praise him, that if you, pray, you know, it's with, with, with the poetry that's descending, you should actually be praising him with poetry that's ascending. Uh, that you should praise him with with uh, in with poet with a poem that is marfur that is ascending that's going up. Uh, so uh, Subhanallah, look at the the thought of this mother, uh, the adab for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So uh, it's narrated that this motivated him to write the Hamziya, which is of course marfur. The Hamziya, every line in the Hamziya ends with a U, which is marfur, which means ascending up. So, subhanAllah, of course, there's nothing wrong in writing a poem, whether it's in ascending or descending. Or These are just, I mean, they don't really mean anything. Uh, you know, these are just... Uh, grammatical term. Uh, so, whether you, you write a poem in any way, it's, it's beautiful. But this is just the other... It's just a feeling that raised him in, in, in an ascending form rather than a descending form. So, Bismillah, he did that. And that's just uh, being very uh, particular about other with the Prophet. Wasallam, And that is. Beautiful. Uh, uh, in other with the Prophet wasallam, is found even in the Sunnah uh, when. Someone asked the Prophet's beloved Sayyidina Al Abbas, radiallahu anhu, they asked his uncle Abbas, uh, 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 between you and the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, who was Akbar? Who was great? Right, or, or, or bigger, you know, who was bigger, you or him? Because uh, Al Abbas. Uh, although he's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uncle, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, close. So they asked him, so between the two of you, although you're his uncle and he's your nephew, but who was big? Because age-wise, like, you know, you're, you appear to be the same. So who was bigger? Akbar. The word used was Akbar. Bigger. So Abba, and that's the other we're talking about. He said, "Kana akbar minni, walakinni ulitu qablahu bis." He replied, "The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was bigger than me, akbar than me. He was akbar than me. He was bigger than me. Uh, but I was born two years before him. I was born two years before him." So look at the adab in this answer. Uh, he, uh, first of all, you know, the questioner said, who's bigger? So he didn't want to say that I am bigger than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Out of adab, there's nothing wrong in that because the, 
the, the questioner is not asking you, but asking about your age. Who's bigger? But still, because the word big has many meanings, uh, Abbas uh, wanted, did not want to call himself bigger than the Prophet ﷺ in anything, not even in his age, which was actually true. So he didn't want to say I'm bigger. So he said, Rasulullah was bigger than me. But I was born before him by two years. So he answered the question as well, but with adab. So this is the type of adab I'm referring to when talking about the Prophet ﷺ. We need to have this type of adab. It's not wajib, it's not fart. It is the love and, and the extra respect that we have that when we speak about him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, uh, that, that etiquette is there. Now, we don't speak about him like we speak about anyone else and ordinary people. So Imam Busayri, radiallahu anh, uh, followed that adab and, and his mother followed that adab. And so Imam Busayri, uh, in obedience to his mother, he wrote uh, this uh Hamziya, and Allah gave it uh, kabul and, and acceptance as well uh, uh, in the Ummah, and uh, till today it is recited and and, uh, and memorized and and uh, you. So Subhanallah, there are many commentaries on it, uh, and that is all because of not only the the the. The eloquence of the poem from an Arabic language point of view, but the beautiful meaning, and not only because of the beautiful meanings in this poem, but primarily because of the sincere love that Imam al Busiri had in his heart when he, when he wrote this poem. And you can see it in every line. Now, before we uh, 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 go into the poem, so uh, uh, the first thing, uh, which is also part of the Adab, is to uh, uh, give an introduction to the author. So we, we do not study any book, and that's part of our akhlaq in Islam, that when we study any book uh, or any text, uh, the adab is to first introduce the author of the text. Because, uh, you know, we're going to be benefiting from what's written by this author. Uh, we're going to be reading what he wrote, and we're going to learn from that. Uh, so how can we not first, you know, give him his view and, and mention him and describe him? So therefore, uh, I just want to touch a little bit on Imam al-Busayri's life. So his name is Imam uh, uh, Sharafuddin Muhammad. Imam Sharafuddin Muhammad. You know, Sharafuddin means the, the, the honor of the deen. Muhammad uh, uh, al-Busayri. Uh, and he was born in uh, a village in Egypt called uh, Dalas. And that's why in some copies of the Burda, they refer to him as a Dalas, a Dalasi as well, or a Dalasiri as well. Uh, however, he grew up in the village of Busir in Egypt, and it's still there, this village of Busir. And uh, this was where his parents were originally from as well. So he became known as the Busiri. Busiri. Uh, by the way, there is another famous scholar of hadith as well, known as Imam al-Hafiz al busayri but that's a different personality, so we shouldn't mix him up with the poet. Uh, Imam al busayris uh, parents, by the way, his father, by the way, uh, came from a, a, a family that originated in Morocco, that originated in Morocco, actually. So they were, although they were in Egypt and grew up in Egypt and so on, and they had been there for a few generations in Egypt, so he's Egyptian by all means, but his origin was from the Sinhaja tribe of Morocco. And Sinhaja, uh, or the Sanhaja, are uh, Amazigh, uh, Berbers, which is an indigenous, native, you know, uh, African uh, tribe, which inhabits the whole of North Africa, the Amazigh, Berber tribes. So Imam al-Busayri's lineage then is Berber, you know. Uh, so in that sense, one can call him an African, uh, you know, because he his, I mean, he was in Egypt. Egypt is part of Africa, and his ancestry goes back to Sanhaja, the Amazigh tribes of Africa. So in that sense, he was, you know, although a great Arab poet, but lineage-wise, he was, you know, uh, and, and ethnically speaking, one could also call him an African. He was born in the year 608 of the Hijra, which is, 
you know, 600 years after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 13, 12, 13. And he was born in 12, uh, uh, 13. So that's more than uh, 800 years ago. Uh, he, uh, after, after memorizing the Quran in his village in Busair, uh, he proceeded to Cairo. To, Egypt, to, to the capital of Egypt, and there he studied with some of the greatest scholars of the, the Azhar, or, or the greatest scholars of Islam there, and uh, he studied the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ particularly, and, uh, you know, the, the other uh, um, mastered the Arabic language, and his main focus was on Arabic poetry. So he went deep into that, and uh, within a short while, he became well known as a poet. Uh, his fame uh, spread in Egypt as a poet. He wrote many poems at that time, uh, and many of the poems he wrote were uh, in praise of the local uh, kings, the, the king of Egypt or uh, some of the local chiefs and emirs uh, and, and, and so on. And that was the culture of the time. A poet would write something, you know, for a king or a prince. And then that king or the prince would give them some, reward them handsomely, give them a very nice, you know, uh, monetary reward or some gifts. And that's how the poet made money. His life. Uh, and the thing is, when you praise these kings and these people, uh, oftentimes, you know, uh, you have to exaggerate. Oftentimes, you even have to say things that are not even true. So, you know, you, you, when you praise a king, you're gonna, you got to say stuff like, oh, you're the bravest king of all. But that's not really true. So he, he you know, uh, Imam al Busari spent a lot of time praising these kings and so on. But at a certain stage of his life, uh, this started bothering him, and uh, his conscience was, was pricking him, uh, he, he, and he decided to make tawbah from this. He decided that, I'm not going to do this anymore, and uh, I don't want to praise the kings anymore. Uh, you know, I want to use my poetry for the sake of Allah. So for seeking a, a spiritual master and guide him and that in the great uh, Qutub, a saint of Egypt at that time, uh, a Sayyidina uh, a Sheikh uh, Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi. Imam Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi uh, was the successor, the Khalifa of the great Qutub and Ghaus and, and, and Wali of Allah, Imam Abu al-Hassan al-Shadli. Imam of Sufi Tariqa, the Shadiliya order, is one of the greatest orders in Islam with millions of followers and branches everywhere. Uh, so Imam al-Mursi is the Khalifa of Siri uh, met him and immediately knew that this is the man of Allah that's going to be my Shaykh. And he took the bay'ah from him and he took the wirid from him. And he became a man of, of zikr and ibadah. And he started writing poems, you know, about Allah and, and, and poems in defense of Islam. So he wrote actually many poems in, in refutation of Christianity and Judaism and proving the truth of Islam. Uh, they're all published in his D1. Uh, Imam al Busayri then um, uh, became, you know, kind of famous as a poet of deen now. After being a poet of the dunya, a poet of deen. Uh, interestingly, his brother in Pariqa was the great uh, Imam uh, Sidi ibn Atayillah. So the famous Imam ibn Atayillah, the author of the Hikam, uh, also was a murid of uh, Sheikh Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi. So Imam al-Busayri and Imam ibn Atayillah are both murids of Sheikh Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi. And they, they, it, it, they used to say that uh, Sheikh Al Mursi, you know, radiallahu anhu, from his baraka, he gave the, the baraka in poetry to Imam Al Busayri, and he gave baraka in prose, in writing in prose, to Imam Ibn Atayillah. 
So Imam Ibn Atayla, he compiled the hikam, which are like uh, wise sayings, proverbs. And there's about 120 or 30 or so on, or, or, or a little bit more. Uh, I'm not 100% sure right now. But uh, of, of these proverbs of Imam Ibn Atayla that are compiled in a book. And uh, it's called the hikam of Ibn Atayla. And that book, the hikam of Ibn Atayla, is also one of the greatest books ever written in Islam uh, uh, in the field of spirituality and ma'rifatullah, the hikam of bin Atayla. If you're on the Sufi path, if you're on the path of purification, self-realization, then reading the hikam of bin Atayla is really helpful. And often you need a sheikh to explain it as well. So it's a beautiful compilation. And so many ulama have written about it and, and explained it and, and so many of the awliya, Allah, they quoted, you know, Sidi Ahmad Tijani radiallahu an quotes from the Hikam of Bin Atayla in his Jawahirul Ma'ani. Sheikh Al Islam, uh, our grand Sheikh Sheikh Ibrahim Niyas radiallahu an used to teach the Hikam of Bin Atayla. He used to teach that book uh, and even give Murid Tarbiya from that book, uh, particularly the, those who became his Murid from the ulama. Uh, he would make them read the hikam with him, and through the hikam, they would achieve the ma'rifah of Allah. So that's the status of the hikam of Ibn Atayla, uh, one of the great uh, shuyukh of uh, our tariqah as well, uh, of Mauritania, Sheikh Ahmadu uh, bin Muhammad al-Hafiz, he even made the hikam uh, into a poem. He took the hikam of Ibn Atayla, but that's not poetry, that's prose. He took all those hikam and he, uh, and he uh, composed them in a poem as well, the Nazmul Hikam. The great Sheikh Ahmadu uh, bin Muhammad al Hafiz. So, anyways, uh, Imam ibn Atayla and Imam al Busiri are brothers in Tariqah. So it's beautiful. You know, one produces the Burda and the Hamziya, the other produces the Hikam. Uh, and that's the barakah of, of, you know, of their, their Sheikh and, and their spirituality and sincerity. So, soon after Imam al Busiri uh, uh, becomes a Murid of the Sheikh and becomes a man of the spiritual path. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests him. Now, when you come on the spiritual path, especially after you spend your life uh, pursuing dunya, maybe, uh, Allah will test you. Yeah, you will be tested, and that test will be a form of purification for you and a rejuvenation for you. So Imam al Busiri was tested with uh, paralysis. So the lower half of his body was paralyzed, which means that he couldn't walk anymore. His legs were paralyzed. He couldn't walk anymore. And uh, he tried everything possible to uh, be healed. Uh, you know, the doctors, the, you know, the, 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 the people who knew these things, even the, the pious people made dua for him. And, but nothing helped. Nothing helped. Uh, until he was advised by his sheikh to praise the Prophet Sallallahu and seek the wasila of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that turn to Rasulullah and see Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, for your condition. started writing the famous Burda and he wrote the entire poem. It was 160... Uh, couplets repeated that poem the same night he uh, concluded the poem he saw the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a dream and he was so uh, uh, overjoyed and overwhelmed to see the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a dream and as he himself says in the hamziya uh, in a line in the hamziya laythahu khassani bi ru'yati wajhin zala an kulli man ra'ahu ash-shaqa'u that may i see his blessed face. In this case, again, uh, for whoever sees his face, all their problems are gone. All their worries are gone. So he saw Rasulullah in the dream, and as he greeted the Rasul وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, asked him to read uh, that poem for him. Uh, the Burda. By that time, the poem... Uh, uh, it wasn't called the Burda yet. He, he didn't give it that name. The name that he had given to it was Al-Kawakib al-Durriya. Al-Kawakib al-Durriya fi madhi khayr al-Bariya. 
the luminous stars in praise of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he read the poem to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the dream, and when he came to the part uh, of the poem where he says. Uh, كما برأت وصيبا باللمس راحة وأطلقت. He says, "Sula Allah, how many times uh, has your blessed hand uh, healed the ill from their illness and the sick from their sickness and released them from their pain and misery?" Uh, which is referring to how the Prophet ﷺ used to heal. Uh, at the sick uh, just by the touch of his hand uh, and this is a miracle Allah granted to Isa السلام, it's mentioned in the Quran and Allah granted it to our Prophet السلام, because as we know every miracle Allah granted to the Prophet before the Prophet السلام, Allah granted the same miracle or better than it or greater than it to our Prophet so he's referring to that. He said, Ya Rasulullah, how many times didn't you heal the sick just by a touch of your, your, your hand and, you, and remove them from their suffering and misery? So when he read that, he cried because he remembers how he also, in real life, he is also paralyzed. So the Prophet ﷺ came forward and rubbed Imam al-Busayri's legs with his blessed palms. And when Imam al-Busayri was, uh, uh, you know, as healing it, so when the Prophet ﷺ took off his burda and he threw it. So when Imam al busari woke up the next morning, subhanAllah, he could smell the fragrance of Rasulullah He could walk. The paralysis was completely gone. His legs were completely healed and he could walk. And because... Uh, Rasulullah had rewarded him with the Burda, uh, the name that was then given to the poem became the Burda. And the narration says that he, when he went uh, uh, to, to his sheikh and uh, told him about what happened, uh, he could tell the sheikh. The sheikh said to him, "Oh, that you 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 just finished, right?" So Imam Al Busiri said, "Yeah, sheikh. How do you know about the poem?" So his sheikh Sidna uh, Al Mursi said that, "Oh, Busiri, when you were reading that poem to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam last night, I was also standing behind him listening to it. So I was also in that habra. I was also in that presence in that blessed court." And I was standing behind the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, listening to it as well. So the poem, uh, uh, the Burda spread far and wide. And I'm not going to talk too much about the Burda because we've, we've, I've done a Burda class on more than one occasion and I've went into great detail about the Burda. So one can find that, those lectures there, inshallah, that information. There's a lot of information about the Burda, but you can find it there. Uh, but with regards to uh, the Hamziya, I mentioned that uh, everybody loved the Burda, uh, except Imam al-Busayri's mother. She just said to him that uh, you wrote a poem, but it's uh, the, the tone of the, the meter of the poem is a descending one. And for the Prophet ﷺ, it is more appropriate to write a poem that's, uh, whose meter you know, is ascending, marfu. So subhanAllah, he then decided to write uh, the Hamziya. Imam al-Busayri, radiallahu uh, uh passed away in the year 696 of the Hijra, uh, which is uh, corresponding with the year 1295, 1295 of the, the Christian calendar. And he passed away in Egypt, known as, uh, he is buried there as well, by the uh, Opposite the tomb of uh, opposite the tomb of his Sheikh Sayyidina Abu Abbas al Bursi radiallahu an. So if you go to Alexandria, both tombs, both maqams, <coughs> mazars, or opposite the ocean, masjid <coughs> and maqam of Sayyidina Abu Abbas al Bursi or al Mursi Abu Abbas as the people of Egypt call him, and you can make ziyarah of him. 
And on the opposite side of his masjid, if you come out of his masjid on the opposite side, you find a beautiful dome, uh, and that is the maqam and the qabr of Imam al Busayri radiallahu anhu. So he's buried basically at the feet of his sheikh and the end lines of the Hamziya as well. So uh, he's buried there radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa rabah. But his poems are in shall be till the day of Qiyamah because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved, uh, you know, loved it and approved of it. So Alhamdulillah, Imam Al-Busayri is the author of the Hamziya. It's more than uh, 500, uh, you know, couplets. And Alhamdulillah, we also have a, a chain, uh, a sanad that goes all the way back to Imam uh, Al-Busayri radiallahu an. So when we teach, inshallah, we, we, you know, we're teaching with an ijazah or with, you know, uh, a chain that connects us to Imam al-Busayri, uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. So, inshallah, I want to share that uh, 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 sanad with you. Uh, and this is in the Burda, but it, uh, and the Hamziya and, and all the poems of Imam al-Busayri, uh, radiallahu an. So, uh, uh, the ijazah I have in, in this poem uh, and all the other poems of Imam al Busayri uh, is from the Honorable, uh, the Noble uh, Muhaddis and, and Murabbi and, and scholar and, and Sufi, uh, the respected Sheikh uh, Sayyid uh, Muhammad uh, Abu Huda Al Yaqubi. So, Sheikh uh, Muhammad Al Yaqubi uh, or Sheikh Abu Huda Al Yaqubi, well known in, in today's time. Uh, originally from Syria, from Damascus, uh, but I think it's currently he's residing in Morocco and is in between the United Kingdom and Morocco. Alhamdulillah, I received the ijazah from him when he came to Cape Town to South Africa, uh, radiallahu an. Uh, and I have from some other shiuch as well, but he is the one on whose sanad I rely in 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 the poems of Imam al-Busayri. Sheikh Abu Huda, Sayyid Muhammad uh, Ali Abu Huda Ali Aqubi, he's also a Sayyid, uh, a descendant of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Imam Al Hassan uh, and through his great grandson Imam Mulay Idris of Morocco, and his ancestors migrated from Morocco to Syria to Damascus, so he is a Hassani Idrisi, radiyallahu uh, an. So I narrate from Sheikh Abu Huda Muhammad Ali Aqubi. Now he uh, his ijazah comes from the great Moroccan scholar who also moved to Damascus, uh, Sheikh Sayyid Muhammad Makki al Kattani. Sheikh Makki al Kattani, uh, from the great Kattani Sayyid family of Morocco. Uh, he had moved to Damascus and became the Sheikh of the Ulama of Damascus, Sayyid Makki al Kattani. And Sheikh Makki al Kattani, who passed away in the 1970s, early 70s, he narrates from Sheikh Abdullah uh, Sofan uh, Al-Qudumi and Nabulsi Al-Hambali, uh, who passed away in the year 1331. And he was uh, a scholar from uh, Hambali, a scholar from Nablus, Palestine. And he narrates from a Sheikh Hassan bin Umar uh, Al-Shatti Al-Hambali, and who passed away in the year 1274. And he's also a great scholar from uh, Syria, uh, and he narrated uh, from a Sheikh Abu Ma'ali Ali Ibn Muhammad Saeed al Suwaidi al Baghdadi. And Sheikh uh, Ali al Suwaidi uh, was from the famous Suwaidi clan from Baghdad, from Iraq. He passed away in the year uh, 1237. 1237. So we're now in the year 1445. And he passed away in the year 1237. He narrated uh, the Burda and the Hamziya and the, and the poems of Imam Busayri from his father, a Sheikh Muhammad Saeed al Suwaidi al Baghdadi, who passed away in the year 1246. And he narrated uh, uh, it from the great Wali and Arif Billah, the famous writer and scholar of. Uh, Palestine and Syria, uh, Sheikh Abdul Ghani and Nabulsi. Sheikh Abdul Ghani and Nabulsi is one of the most renowned scholars of the 11th century 
and wrote many beneficial books and poems and and so on. Uh, he died in the year 1143, uh, radiallahu Sheikh Abdul Ghani and Nabusi and uh, Al Qadiri and Naqshbandi. Now, uh, we, we stopped and, at Sheikh Abdul Ghani and Nabusi. Now, uh, Sheikh uh, Abul Huda Al Yaqubi has another sanad that goes back to Sheikh uh, Abdul Ghani and Nabusi, and that is from the the Mufti of Syria, Sheikh Sayyid Muhammad Abu Yusur Abidin Al Husseini, from his grandfather, Al Sheikh Ahmad uh, Abdul Ghani bin Abidin, from the Muhaddis of Syria, the great Sheikh Abdul Rahman Al Kuzbari, and he narrated from the great Sheikh uh, Wali of Syria, Sheikh Mustafa Al Rahmati Al Ayyubi, and he narrated from Sheikh Abdul Ghani Al Nabulsi. So we've got two chains. From Sheikh uh, Muhammad Ali Aqubi going back to Sheikh Abdul Ghani in Nabulsi. Now, Sheikh Abdul Ghani in Nabulsi, he narrated the Burda and the Hamziya and the poems of Imam Busayri from a Sheikh Najmuddin Al Ghazi. Najmuddin Al Ghazi was from the city of Gaza, which is in English, which they call Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the people of Gaza and give them victory against their opponents and their occupiers uh, and uh, grant them his rahmah and relief. Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. Sheikh Najmuddin al Ghazi from Gaza narrated from his father, Al Imam Badruddin al Ghazi, also from Gaza, from, from Palestine, from the city of Gaza, which is Gaza in English. And this city is, by the way, uh, 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 a great city and a very historical city. Uh, somebody as great as Imam uh, al-Shafi'i was born there. A lot of people don't know. Imam al-Shafi'i, the founder of the Shafi'i Mazhab, was born in Gaza. And he moved to Mecca. His origin was from Mecca, but his father had went to Gaza and he was born in Gaza. As well as the, the great grandfather of our Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina uh, Hashim, Right, Hashim uh, is, is he died in Gaza and is buried in Gaza. That's why the full name of Gaza is Gazat Hashim. They call it in the old Arabic books, they call it Gazat Hashim, the Gaza of Hashim, because Rasulullah's great grandfather Sayyidina Hashim is buried there. He's Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the son of Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib, the son of Hashim, and that's why he's called the Hashimite prophet. The, the name of his clan is Banu Hashim. Hashim is buried in Gaza, and his and there till today there is actually his tomb and his masjid is there. In Gaza, the the tomb of Hashim and the masjid of Hashim is there. So one can even make ziyara of Rasulullah's great grandfather in Gaza. Anyways, uh, Imam Badruddin al Ghazi, who passed away in the year 984, narrates this poem from Sheikh al Islam and the greatest scholar of his time, Imam Zakaria al Ansari. Um, Zakaria al Ansari was from Cairo and he was known to be the greatest scholar of his time, uh, a gigantic imam of hadith and fiqh. He narrates from uh, Amir al Mu'minin fil Hadith, Al Hafiz ibn Hajar al Asqalani. Imam ibn Hajar al Asqalani, I don't need to introduce him, he's one of the greatest scholars not only of his time, he's one of the greatest scholars of Islam that ever lived. He's one of the greatest Imams of Islam that ever lived, Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani. He's the one who authored the famous commentary on Sahih al Bukhari, which is called Fathul Bari, which runs into like 25 volumes. And he wrote so many other books that are studied and taught till today. One of the greatest Imams in the history of Islam, Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, agreed upon by everyone, whether you're Sufi, Salafi, whatever you are, Ibn Hajar is. Uh, a, an author, uh, you know, an authoritative scholar referred to by everyone. So Hafiz ibn Hajar al Asqalani, by the way, uh, he was from Cairo as well, but his family came from As Asqalan. And Asqalan is a city in Palestine, which uh, the Jews, they call it Ashkelon. Ashkelon. And it's a city that was a Muslim city, but was taken over by the Zionists. And today the Muslims are. Uh, a minority in that city, it's mostly Jews now, but it used to be a 100% Muslim city, Asqalan. And there are hadiths that talk about Asqalan, uh, how it's going to be 
a place of jihad in the last days and so on. Uh, you know, so uh, Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani's family comes from there, but he was from Cairo and is buried in Cairo. So Al-Hafiz Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani narrates the Burda and the Hamziya and so on from Imam Shamsuddin al-Nahawi al-Maliki, uh, also an Egyptian scholar who died in the year 802. And he narrates it from the famous Imam Abu Hayyan al-Nahawi. Uh, this is one of the most famous scholars of the Arabic language and grammar in in the history of Islam. Imam Abu Hayyan is well known. Imam Abu Hayyan, the books that he's written and so on. Uh, Imam Abu Hayyan, uh, whose family originally came from Andalus, from Spain, but they had to migrate to Egypt after the fall of Spain to the Christians, to the Catholics. He narrates the Burda, the Hamaziyah, and the poems of Imam Busayri directly from Imam al-Busayri himself. Directly from Imam al-Busayri himself. So, alhamdulillah, that is our connection uh, directly going back to Imam al-Busayri, myself from Sheikh Muhammad al-Yaqubi, and he from his sheikhs, uh, and, and from sheikh to sheikh to sheikh, all the way to Imam al-Busayri. So this is called the Sanad, and in Islamic traditional studies, uh, it's always good to have the Sanad. Uh, because it, 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 you know, it's an authorization. There is barakah in it. There is khair in it. It's a transfer of knowledge and nur and a permission that goes back to those who wrote these books. And in hadith and sunnah, it goes back to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, alhamdulillah, uh, with this sanad that we have, we will be uh, with the barakah of this sanad, inshallah, we'll be teaching the hamzia of uh, Imam uh, al, al busayri uh, and we will be teaching it. With the explanation given on it by none other than uh, our our grand sheikh Sidi Ahmed al Tijani uh, al Qutb al Maktoum radiyallahu an, and in the next lesson, inshallah, I'll be giving a little bit of a background and uh, a, a history of the commentator Sidi Ahmed al Tijani radiyallahu an, because we're gonna read the Hamziya, but as explained by Sheikh Ahmed Tijani radiyallahu an. So we're going to be reading his words as so that when Imam Busayri and we read the words of Sidi Ahmad Tijani radiallahu an, the listener and the student and the learner is aware of both personalities uh, who we are learning from. And that's the other in such a class. Always. So inshallah with that, we will uh, hope everyone benefits and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who benefit from knowledge and practice upon it and uh, who have a good ending. Uh, Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen. Bijahi Rasulillah Sallallahu Alaihi Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Al-Fatiha lima ughliq wal khatima lima sabaq Nasir al-haqqi bil-haq wal hadhi ila suratika al-mustaqeem wa ala alihi haqqa qadrihi wa miqdarihi al-azim walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Barakallahu fikum.